Folks, it is not Christmas yet, so you can relax. You have plenty of time. Christmas is this holiday which, unlike Halloween and Thanksgiving, which we just had, um, is burdened or decorated, if you will, with a lot of material culture, a lot of tasks, too. We have the gifts, of course, but we also have the tree and we have decorations and there are parties and there are tickets to buy for special holiday events. In my family, we go uh, to the Revels in Cambridge at some point over the Advent season and we also go see It's a Wonderful Life every year. And we do all those things um, to build up to this holiday. And what we need to remind ourselves is that we only have to do the things that we want to do in spite of the pressure to go get the presents or to hit the sale or, or to do more and more things and be more and more festive when maybe we're feeling it, but maybe we are not. And so I just wanted to start with that today because, because it, is, it is a stuff-oriented holiday and it doesn't need to be. In fact, you yourselves can find ways to make different meanings. Now, I personally don't particularly care what meaning you find, as long as it's a positive one and a healthy one for you. In our tradition, we didn't even start celebrating Christmas until the 19th century um, because of our belief, our current belief, and certainly then as well, that every day is equally holy. So why would you wait for, say, Thanksgiving to give thanks? Or why would you wait until Christmas or Easter to, to think about God and Jesus and the spirit that works through you and in your life? You can do that every day. That's the tradition. But, um, but we have ways to help. There are ways that we can... Um, there are practices that we can have that can keep us grounded and keep us from being overwhelmed by Christmas before Christmas even starts on the 25th of December. One of those ways is to come to church. Um, as you may have gathered in our tradition, uh, since Christmas is a thing we celebrate now but haven't always, it's a little bit low-key, our Advent season is. Um, another way is to observe Advent itself and, you know, find ways to pace yourself through that and remember that the whole thing isn't this frantic work up to one day because if it is, frankly, it will always disappoint. Okay, so, so think, about how, think about that too. Um, there are other ways too. Um, there's service projects and there are spending times with your friends that are, is important. On Cyber Monday, for example, I didn't go shopping. I went online and played a Dungeons and Dragons game with many of my soon to be very busy clergy friends. It was great, but it's something we do all the time in every season. So think about that stuff that brings you joy too, because that too is holy. But this Sunday, we do have a reading I wanted to share, and it's kind of Christmassy. I mean, the people who go to church will recognize it as a Christmas reading. Uh, people who are less churchy uh, with, you know, their Christmas celebrations um, may not, because it's about John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, of course, is kind of a famous grouch, or he's sort of perceived that way. And here he yells at people a little bit about what they should be doing with their lives. But... I'm going to read it, and I want you to think about it while I do. John said to the crowds who came out to be baptized by him, You pack of snakes, who warned you to escape the wrath to come? Produce good fruit as a sign of your repentance, and don't presume to say to yourselves, We have Sarah and Abraham as our mother and father, for I tell you that God can raise children for Sarah and Abraham from these very stones. The axe is already laid at the root of the tree. Every tree that doesn't produce good fruit will be cut down and tossed into the fire. When the people asked him, what should we do? John replied, let the one with two coats share with the one who has none. 
Let those who have food do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized, and they said to John, Teacher, what are we to do? And John answered them, Exact nothing over and above your fixed amount. Soldiers likewise asked, What about us? And John told them, Don't bully anyone. Don't accuse anyone falsely, and be content with your pay. Now, what I'd like you to think about with those things, and you can go back and look, or you can read it. That's, I believe, in chapter 3. And um, what I'd like you to think about is whether what John is saying is really all that difficult. He's yelling at people. He calls them snakes or customarily a brood of vipers. But really, he's just saying the sorts of things that we should be doing anyway. Feeding each other, sharing with each other, not ripping people off. So if we find that message radical, what does that say about us? That's something to think about. And I'll talk a little bit about it on Sunday, but this Sunday is actually going to be crazy busy and you should come and participate because it's, it's fun. Um, we have our sanctuary lighting in which, uh, you know, we do all the readings that we're going to do over the Advent season and we light a candle in each of the windows uh, of the church and that's fun. And then um, I'll talk a bit and then we will have probably a brief communion service so we can get it all in within our usual one hour time slot. And then you can hang out uh, at coffee hour and talk about the holiday or not talk about the holiday, depending on how you're feeling. So um, take care of yourselves. It's a busy time and a lot of people are feeling a lot of pressure to be happy when they may not be. So keep that in mind as well. And I'll see you in church. Until then, you know how to get in touch. Bye.